Okay, in this video we're going to go through the last few steps required to make our character playable in the UDK game engine. Previously we had made a skeletal mesh uh, and animated him and got him into UDK. All videos go through that are available on YouTube. In this case what we're going to do is now take all those assets and pull them all together into this one mobile uh, mobile policeable pawn that uh, currently if you open the, open the Jazz Jackrabbit scene that would be Jazz Jackrabbit. So, um, if you're playing along that way, go ahead and just open up the scene and pick on Jazz Jackrabbit, hit F4 to bring up the properties, and you'll see that it's a mobile placeable pawn. So all we're going to do in this case is we're just going to replace a few of the assets here um, so that we can take advantage of all the stuff that they've already set up for you. Uh, I'd encourage you to go through and take a look at this, the setup inside of Kismet for what's going on to actually control Jack. I'm not going to cover that in this video. Um, we may possibly go through that later on, but... Um, if we go down to the movement section, just to give you a quick kind of idea, they have a uh, mobile look, which is the right stick doing a shooting. So it's setting a vector, setting actor locations based off the character, and then it's going off and shooting different uh, projectiles from projectile factories. And then down for the movement, uh, the left stick does the movement. We get a value. We multiply it all kinds of good stuff. Down here, what's going on is we're comparing to see if there's any movement. Um, you know, like if the stick's at zero, basically, then it'll go ahead and subtract slowly. So it'll basically slow the character down so that when you let go of the stick, it doesn't just stop on a dime. Um, so yeah, I suggest going through these, um, even, even just to kind of know which values to go in here and tweak with. Um, so yeah, anyway, Kismet's cool and fun. So all right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to make one asset and then we're going to bring uh, all the assets that we've made previously into this one uh, mobile placeable pawn. So that asset is an anim tree, and that's the only the only thing we haven't covered so far. The anim tree is sort of it was sort of scary at first to me because I didn't quite understand it, but then when I got what it was doing, the name is pretty obvious, <laughs> animation tree. Um, but uh, well, let's go through making one. So we'll we'll explain what it does along the way. So to to make it, right click inside of this uh, thing, and obviously this is not showing up based on the camera capture stuff I'm using. Um, so when you right click in here, there'll be a menu, um, and you're going to do new anim tree, and that'll bring up the the make new dialog. Um, in this case, group. We're just gonna what, put whatever wherever you want animation, and then um, we're going to call this uh, Toothy's new anim tree. Okay. And that'll pop up the anim tree editor, and it's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's very similar to the material editor. If you have an anim tree and you have an animation and morph uh, tab input output input it's input yeah it's input. Um, is it output? Man, we're gonna get this. It's gonna work. We're gonna just hold on. We'll get there. <laughs> so what we need to do now is uh, we're basically we're gonna we're piping we're piping in animation data. Uh, based on a few factors into this uh, into this node right here, and then that's going to tell our character which animation to use. And it can be blended between multiple animations, blended by bones. You can use morph targets as, as well. Uh, being mobile, I don't know if you actually can use morph targets, but we're not gonna we're not gonna get into that now. Um, so the first thing that I suggest doing is we click on this anim tree node, and if you go down in the uh, the property window down here, and we go down to where is it? Preview and I'm where, where is it? Preview mesh, yeah. Preview mesh list. So right here. So this is a list of items to use for previewing while inside of the anim tree editor, and we just want to use one, which is our skeletal mesh. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and find toothy skeletal mesh, and then pick them in the browser, or your character in your browser, and then click the little green arrow, and magically he appears. I used L and move it so that the light, L on your mouse, move the light around just in case it's too dark. Okay, so now we have him in here. He's not doing anything, obviously, because he uh, he doesn't have, we haven't told him what to do inside of this area. He's just basically a mesh sitting there. So what we need to do now is add his anim sets. And so similar, same, similar as up here as a preview mesh, we're going to do a preview animation set. And then uh, preview animation set again, and then find the anim set, which in this case is this guy. Okay, and so now we have um, a character a character mesh, and we have a preview animation set. So now what we need to do is start piping in animation into this anim tree so that our character starts moving when, for instance, he starts to move in a direction. So 
the first thing we want to do is, like I just said, we want to blend his animation based on direction. So if we right click, we're going to get the menu right here, and we're going to say where it's been a minute since I've done this. <laughs> animation, go, oh, we're looking for animation blend directional. So we're going to do blend by. Oh boy. It's probably staring me right in the face, and you're looking at it going, just click on it. Okay, let's try this filter. Animation, no, no, oh boy. We're doing this. It's directional right there. All right. <laughs> All right. That's why it took a year to get this done. Okay, so anyway, uh, we have animation node blend by direction, or blend directional. Uh, what this is going to do is it's going to take in four directions and blend them based on the direction that the character is, is being controlled or being moved, and that's coming in from, uh, from our Kismet stuff. So what we're going to do is basically going to give... We're, this anim tree is going to serve as our template for which animation to play when something happens. So in this case, when the character is walking forward, we want to have a certain animation playing. So to make those animations, you right-click, new animation sequence, anim node sequence, okay? And now you've got this little kind of burgundy color thing. And uh, we have him picked and our anim sequence name. Now we need to basically find the anim sequence names that are inside of our anim set. So if you don't remember those off the top of your head, you just double-click on your anim set. Go here and find that it's Toothy Walk Forward. Okay. Hopefully yours is not named Toothy Walk Forward, but mine is. So Toothy Walk Forward. Ta-da. That should be right. Okay. And then if I tie this in uh, just by dragging, click and drag. And if I tie this in here, now our character is ready to go. There's one more value to set in this root node that I forgot, which is there's a play. Oh, so it's in the, uh, the anim node, actually. So um, if you press playing inside of here, it'll play. You saw it just played once, and that was that. We need to click on looping. Okay. So that's in that's on per, per node. And since we're going to be making a bunch of these and copying and pasting them, I figured we'd get it all working right on the first one. Okay. So now we've got that. We're going to click on this node and copy-paste. And rename these the appropriate ones. And I'm just looking over here to remember what I named them and to also um, I usually have that open more to make sure that stupid things like case sensitivity um, like for instance I might have capitalized the W because I'm a dumbass but I didn't this time so I'm proud of myself okay so walk left and then walk right All right. so now we've got these four nodes all these guys are doing are pointing at this animation d data over here, so just got to make sure the naming is right between them. And then it's going through this, this node and saying, hey, based which way I'm going, I'm going to play this certain animation. So since I'm walking forward right now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play forward. If I walk backward, I'm going to play the backward one. Left, left, and right, right. And this little black tab, little guy down here, basically lets you um, change the direction that the character is walking in, in this case. And you look over here and see his feet. Um, We'll start going in the different directions. So he's going backwards now. Okay. Um, and then the one that's orange is kind of showing you that that currently, based on these settings, is the one that's getting piped through into the, uh, the actual animation. Um, so as you'll see, we're going to put one more node in here. Um, and the, the orange is a nice, uh, nice method to see kind of where, where uh, the animation is flowing from. All right, so the last thing that we're going to do, now there's definitely a lot to do um, inside of anim trees, there's a lot of uh, available options, a lot of things to do um, if you want. In this case, we're just doing about as simple an entry as anim tree as possible. So, just wanted to say that to set expectations. Okay, so now we need one more node, uh, which is the anim blend by speed node. Okay, and that was uh, right click animation node blend by blend by speed. Okay, and what's this is, what this is going to do is it's going to let us control when we let go of the, uh, the controller, let go of the thumbstick, or drop your iPhone, or whatever. Then he's no longer going to be walking around like a yeah, nutcase like this. We want to actually have him uh, do an idle animation. So, and you can see it's all wired up right here, so I need to kind of interfere this wiring um, to, uh, to affect um, what I'm going to do right now. So... Because I'm going to blend my speed right now, I need to add another uh, input because I want to say, hey, if it's at zero, play this one thing. But what if it's at another value, go ahead and play this this uh, this other stuff. So if that made good sense, it's terrible English, but 
think it gets the point across. You'll see it. Just copy what I what you see. <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to do is uh, just like in Kismet, uh, you're going to Alt click on uh, a node to de to to break the link, um, and then we're going to go. We're going to say, all right, we're going to take. We need one more animation. So I'm just going to copy and paste this anim node, and I'm going to call this one Toothy Idle. Again, referencing my anim set over here, or yeah, my animation sets over here. Um, and then I'm going to say, all right, your child won. So when we're really slow, we're at the we're at the bottom. Um, then um, you're going to be you're going to be played. And then when we reach a certain threshold, we're going to go ahead and play this guy right here, which is all of this directional stuff. So then we're going to pipe this right back in, and then you're going to see. Because we're at zero, he's he's playing the idle animation, which is nothing. It's and that's that's because it is nothing. If you look over here, my idle animation is a is one frame. So um, that's some quick animation for you. So that's it's doing its job. And then as soon as it gets out of idle, it goes and blends into um, the node directional stuff. So. At this point, now we can start saying there's a couple of values we might want to mess with, which are blend up and blend down times. This is basically how how long after that value is changed does it take to blend between these two nodes. And you can see when I just jam it, it it's pretty instant. So if I want to go ahead and make it blend a little bit, um, I'll just change the blend up time to something like plan, uh, 2.5 because when I want him to get going, I'd like him to kind of take off pretty quick, but not that fast. And then blend, blend down time, I'll do 0.35. And so that'll allow it to kind of blend in a little bit. You can see how it kind of it just kind of cycles down a little bit there. Okay. Okay. At this point, now we're going to take all the assets that we've made: uh, anim trees, anim sets, the skeletal mesh, all that good stuff, and pull it together into a playable character. Uh, the moment you have been waiting for. And it is uh, it's surprisingly simple. Uh, the mobile placeable pawn has pretty much everything you need in this case to, to take all the data and, and pipe it all together and give you a little character to cruise around the screen with. Um, so in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to replace Jazz Jackrabbit. So the first thing that I want to show you is sort of how the collision detection works on it because we will be running into a little bit of an issue of it with it um, based on where the pivot of my character is. Um, but you will see that um, in a second. But to be able to see that, I need to get these, um, these sprites out of the way. And, um, but if I hit G for game view, then I can't see the collision anymore. So there might be a better way of doing this, but the way I know is to go into show and then advanced flags and then down here in the sprites, just turn them off like that. There's probably hockey. I don't know, but I don't do it enough to warrant looking for it. So, um, feel free to put that in the comments though, if you do know the fast way. So anyway, um, when you look at Jazz Jackrabbit, he's got this, uh, this cylinder around him, this little uh, green cylinder, and that's his collision. If we go and we have him picked and press F4, you'll see that it's mobile placeable pawn, and that's the the mobile version of the uh, the player start basically. And so you'll see he's got a skeletal mesh, he's got an anim tree template, he's got some anim sets or uh, one anim set. Uh, there's health as well, and then one other value that we're going to be messing around with here is his collision. So down um, down in the collision uh, rollout tab, if you look at collision component, if you roll that guy out and you'll see he's got a height and a radius and so right now the radius is set to 10 so they set to 50 and now he's got a big old big old box around him or a big old cylinder um, so we'll just put that back to 10 but you'll see in a second when I bring my character in um, if you look at jazz his pivot points right in the center of his uh, of his body um, we bring in my character I tend to do all of my characters with their pivots uh, on the floor most games that I work on to, uh, tend to, to ask for them that way um, so, not sure why Jazz is in the middle, but um, if anybody does know, that would be interesting to find out. Um, so, if we take a look at my guy again, he's standing on the floor. If I brought up Jazz, he'd be in the middle of the, the grid. So, let's go ahead and swap out some parts, and uh, we'll get to the collision thing when we see what happens. So, I'm going to select my skeletal mesh in the browser, and I'm going to go to the skeletal mesh guy right here, green button, boom. And you can see right away, you see how my character is now based at pivot point. He's standing up there, and he's up in the world. And so in the uh, mobile placeable pawn movement tab, if you look at location, you know, obviously any time they're bold, they're bold color, that means that something non-default has been, there's some non-default value. Um, if you ever want to go back to default, you just right-click and say reset the default. So in this case, I'll say zero. And now you see, all right, my character is, is you know, his feet are 
in the right place on the ground, but he's clipping through the shadow. And the shadow is just an object, a sprite, that's linked to this character and just follows him around and, and simulates a shadow without having to do any fancy real-time shadows. Um, so it's a, it's a cool little simple trick, and keeping it off of the ground so that it's, it's not like a couple, you know, just a couple of pixels away is a good idea so that it doesn't clip when you're far enough away um, with the camera. So in this case, I'm going to leave the, the blob shadow where it is, and then I'm just going to bring my guy up. I think 10 or so. Uh, let's do 12. Okay. And so now he's, um, you know, in the right place. So now one problem is going to happen, one, one big problem will happen, is that you see his collision cylinder is going through the floor. And so that's going to basically act as a stake. Um, so once, I, I'll go ahead and put these other animations and stuff in there, but you'll see when I try to move him, he'll be able to pivot around, but he won't be able to move because the collision is basically, he's got a, he's got a, he's got a thing in his thing, if you know what I'm saying. Okay, so we're going to move on and we're going to swap out our anim tree template, which is the jazz anim tree right now. We want to use our new one that we just made. And so we'll click on that, click on the green arrow. Um, and then anim sets, we need to tell which anim set we're going to be using. New anim set poofy. And there's that. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and press the play on mobile button. And you should see this. Okay, and so if I move around, he spins around. He's also in his idle pose, so I know it's looking at the anim tree, right? Okay, turtles. Um, but then you see if I'm if I move it, I'm not moving, and I'm getting pounded on by the the turtles taking me to town here. Okay, so what we need to do is adjust this uh, collision cylinder. And we do that by going back down and saying uh, collision height or collision radius. Uh, the easiest way that we can just do it right here is to change the height to uh, 20, and then we actually need to. Whoops, that's not right. move it up a bit as well. So let's just, we're just using two values here. We got a translation and then we have the, um, the height and the radius. So if we wanted to do it, let's just do it the way that, let's do it the way I would do it. So, you know, in case he bumps his head in the, into things, this height's obviously not going to be tall enough. So 80 or so. I mean, these are values you could have already worked out or you could just do this. Um, and then we're going to go down to the translation, and we're going to bring that up. Actually, why not just use a slider? Okay, be much better. And uh, there we go. Get somewhere like that. Uh, let's get right. Come on, buttons. Do your thing. Okay. Good enough. All right, sticking out of his head a little bit at the top, so you know, hey, if you had a game where he walked through a doorway and it was... He's going to clip, so you might want to fix that. Anyway, we're not going to deal with that right now. So, okay, we've got a collision um, cylinder that's no longer sticking through the floor. And so now when we go into our preview window, we should have arrived at our final destination, which is a walking. And, hey, there's another one of my characters. Get out of here. You're not supposed to be seen until the game comes out. All right. So anyway. Uh, all right, well, there you go. I'm going to pause this. God, the music. Um, everybody, thank you very much for uh, watching these and following through. And uh, a, uh, a kind apology to all of those waiting for this final one. I'm sorry it took so long. Uh, we'll be back with some new stuff pretty soon. But otherwise, uh, everybody, take care.